In this video, we're going to talk about some pitfalls that improvisers often fall into when they're learning how to solo. By understanding these mistakes and how to avoid them, you'll be able to improve your jazz improvisation skills and take your solos to the next level. Hi, my name is Jason Klobnik, and I'm a jazz trumpeter from Denver, Colorado that helps musicians find a better way to improvise. If you're looking for a quick jazz improv tip that will help your soloing, then you've come to the right place. While there are probably more than just these three common mistakes and pitfalls, these are the ones that I have seen the most while helping coach high school, college, and above students reach their improvisation goals. So let's get right to it. The first pitfall, playing too many notes. While this pitfall is probably not the case for beginners, it is definitely one of the most common for intermediate players and above. When you're soloing, it can be tempting to try to cram as many notes as possible into a short amount of time. But this can actually make your solos sound cluttered and difficult to follow. Instead, try to focus on playing a few well-chosen notes that really add to the melody and the overall sound of the band. My go-to suggestion for these well-chosen notes are called targets. I have a ton of other videos on my channel and in my other resources that you can check out. But targets are notes that we aim for on purpose. They are carefully chosen notes that fit a macro purpose. For instance, the one, the three, or five of the key area, or a micro purpose, which could be a chord tone for the chord you are on in that exact moment in time. To avoid playing too many notes, try to think about phrasing and leaving space in your solos. This means playing groups of notes that have a clear beginning and end, as well as leaving gaps between phrases for the other musicians to respond to. You can also experiment with different note lengths, such as playing longer notes on the beat and shorter notes off the beat to create more interest and variation in your solos. Another suggestion is to try and leave at least as much space as the length of line that you just played. This particular concept can leave too much space if overdone, so you'll need to use your best musical judgment. The second most common mistake, not listening to the band and your bandmates. As a musician, it's easy to get caught up in your own performance and focus solely on what you're playing. But in a band setting, it's critical to listen to the other musicians and respond to what they're playing. By paying attention to the rhythm section, in addition to the chord changes, you can ensure that everyone is playing together and create a cohesive sound. This will make for a better overall performance and a more enjoyable listening experience for your audience. The last thing anyone wants is for your solo to sound like you are working out ideas with a play along track, like a neighbor sold or a band in the box or I reel. You don't want that. But how do you develop your listening skills with the rhythm section? So here are a few tips. 
practice playing with other musicians. Sounds obvious, right? This will give you the opportunity to hear how your playing fits in with the rest of the band and make adjustments as needed. This has been one of the biggest benefits of going to jam sessions, in my opinion. Take note of what other musicians do when you play a particular line. How are they responding to it? Are they treating your line like a call and response? Are they ignoring it? Then ask yourself internally after that moment, how do I respond to their response? Pay attention to the overall sound of the band, not just your own instrument. This will help you understand how your playing contributes to the overall band experience and how you can adapt to fit in with the rest of the group. All right, the third most common mistake, getting stuck in familiar patterns. We've all been there. When we improvise on our instruments, it's easy to fall back on familiar patterns and licks that we know well. This can be a tempting default because it feels comfortable and it feels safe. But the problem is that using the same old tricks over and over can make our solos sound predictable and uninteresting. So, how can we avoid this mistake and make our, improv our improvising more exciting and fresh? So here are a few tips for that. Practice something new. This will challenge your brain and muscles to think and play in different ways and will open up new possibilities for your solos. If, you were, if all you were doing is playing up and down the same scales and expecting a different result, I think you know what I'm talking about. If you have never worked on melodic playing, work on it. If you have neglected chromaticism, guess what? Work on it. Be mindful of your practice and playing decisions. Then make conscious decisions about what you want to play when you are in the moment. This will help you stay present and avoid falling back on old habits. And when you are improvising, don't be afraid to take risks and try out new ideas. You never know what interesting sounds you might come up with if you push yourself out of your comfort zone. Another great idea is to listen to other musicians for inspiration. Don't just listen to the same old stuff you always listen to. Explore new instruments, explore new genres, explore new styles, and pay attention to how other musicians approach improvising. You might hear something that sparks a new idea for your own playing. Something a little out of the box would be to experiment with different sounds and effects. Try playing with a delay pedal or maybe even a distortion pedal. small changes can make a big difference in how your solos sound because you will find yourself approaching it from a different angle or perspective, especially if the instrument you play doesn't typically use effects pedals. In short, to avoid getting stuck in familiar patterns while improvising, be willing to step out of your comfort zone and try new things. This will keep your playing fresh and interesting and help you continue to grow as a musician. Good jazz improvisation takes time, it takes dedication to master. With practice, awareness of common mistakes and willingness to try something new, 
jazz musicians can build their jazz improvisation skills to a more creative sound. Be sure to listen to the band, use good phrasing, and make your solo stand out. Finally, practice with new scales and chord progressions and experiment with different sounds to avoid getting stuck in the same old patterns. With these tips, jazz jazz improvisation can be a joy for musicians of all skill levels. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that it has added value or benefit to your playing in some way. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell that's right next to it that lets you know when another video comes out. And if you know any other musician that might find this useful, you can share it with them too. Until then, my name is Jason Klobnik, and I'll see you on the next one.